the best chocolate in the world doesn't come from Belgium or Switzerland. It comes from Mexico. And one local chocolate maker is eliminating the boundaries of what is possible to create very modern chocolate. Jose Ramon Castillo of Quebo grew up in Mexico City, the son of two dentists, strangely enough, went to culinary school in Europe, and then came home to Mexico and turned his attention to chocolate making. Jose Ramon's studio is located in the Santa Fe section of Mexico City. And here, he is as much artist as he is chef. At one time, sculptor. At another, painter. They make over 4,000 pieces of chocolate a day here, and yet each one is handcrafted and made with precision. Capo is best known for combining their chocolate with dozens of unique flavors. Citrus fruits are combined with their white chocolate, while stronger flavors like coffee and mezcal are combined with darker chocolate. But that's hardly the limit of the combinations that they've invented. They now have a number of stores around Mexico City where they display and sell their very unique chocolates. When you say chocolate, to regular people in Mexico, what do they think about? For us, chocolate is everything. We have a, a really uh, big uh, culture of, of drinking cocoa here. That's what I think, because, you know, when I say chocolate, just the word chocolate to most of my Mexican friends, they immediately think of this hot beverage. Correct. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I, they don't usually think of these kind of beautiful chocolates. No, right? it's different. So is this Mexican chocolate? Eight years ago, when I started this, uh, a lot of people came in. Uh, what type of chocolate do you use? Uh, is Belgium from Belgium or from France? No, from Mexico. Ah, oh. uh, but but it's, it's of quality, uh, quality chocolate. Yeah, well, this is where it comes from. Yeah, correct. So for us, origin is everything. We we go to to, to Tabasco, Chiapas, and making a, a real uh, responsible marketing to a, a, a producer, no? So the, the future of that family is, is quite all right. And in the production of your chocolate, everything you can see, the, 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 the earth, the pH, the fermentation, the roasting, the conching, everything. You have the total control over the quality of your, of your, of your, your ingredient. And I think we all know that when you have a single source like that, you have a unique flavor. Correct. The flavor is unique. It's unique because you have the best of, of everything. But there's a lot of acid uh, flavors in my, in my chocolate. Mango, uh, uh, well, guava. I was just looking at this mango. No, so, okay, one of my favorite raspados, or yeah, like yeah. snow cones, Correct, yeah. is with, with mango that has, like mango syrup, and then they put the chamoy, that spicy Correct, apricot yeah, yeah. thing on it. When you go to Mexico to the, to the parks, yeah. And on Sundays, it's really classic for oh, this so guy who's, who's selling the, the food, the salad fruit. Yeah. It's so, so really my good. mouth is watering, thinking, <laughs> can, I, can I taste that one? Yeah, I want to see what the, ex the experience is like. You have to be a little bit spicy, a little yeah. bit acid, and a, a little bit salty. You're, <laughs> yeah. you're taking me on a ride. It's just like it hits your tongue on every place that it could possibly hit yeah. it. That's really remarkable. But then. Right next to it, mm -hmm. it says Chapulín. Yeah, it's uh, tamarind with the grasshopper. Okay, a uh, long time ago. would yeah. certainly make it a Mexican flavor. Salty, yeah. acid, and, and sweet. All the flavors you All love. All the flavors, yeah, correct. Okay, so I want to taste one of those too. I try to make something that I love and a really uh, Oaxacan uh, ingredient. Yeah. Grasshoppers. It's remarkable in its flavor. Mm -hmm. It just jumps up. I mean, when you taste tamarind, that's such a uh, deep, rich, and acidic flavor. Um, I think you've convinced me. I wasn't sure when I came in here okay. whether I thought this was really Mexican chocolate or not. Yeah, yeah, because we is. think of it, right, Mexican chocolate is just that super rustic stuff, real coarsely ground. You make it into mm. your hot beverage and everything. We are making good, good stuff, but with our culture. Uh, that's really important. No, I am not going well, to you've make. you infused your culture yeah, into correct. these flavors, not only ingredients, but just yeah. the way you balance the flavors. Mm -hmm. Even though you look at them and you might think that, oh, this is going to be European style, there's an authenticity of flavor. It's beautiful. Jose Ramon also serves a wide variety of chocolate drinks at Cabo. 
but one of the most unique is called Tasca Latte. It's from the state of Chiapas, and it's traditionally served cold. It's made with cacao, a little bit of sugar, some cinnamon, ground up tostadas, and ground achiote seed, which is what gives it that kind of orangey color. He places all of that into a milkshake mixer and he blends it with water. Once it's fully mixed, it's poured into a pitcher with ice. It's a beautiful color. Kind of an earthy orange. Okay, I gotta taste it. And we have the jicara. The, jicara, the gourd, the gourd drinking cup. So like when you're in Oaxaca and you have another one of the cacao drinks, tejate, when you always get it served in the, the jicara in like the jicara. that. Okay, can so, I just help myself to a little bit okay. of this? Okay, well, it smells of, of cacao. Yeah, sure. It also smells of achiote. And, right. and the, the most interesting thing is it has that kind of popcorn flavor that you get in a good tostada. And that's like one of the most incredible aromas that's right here. It's uh, really good. If, if you drink it in, in the morning, it's like a whole breakfast. It's, a, it's, a, it's an amazing thing, and it's not anything like any other chocolate drink, I think, that's made it's anywhere. It's super refreshing. Yeah, you can you can change the recipe if you want. Uh, even in Chiapas, there's a restaurant that they put a little bit of, of uh, lemon ice cream and vodka, and it's called Pumbo. And when they ask, uh, they vodka? ring out, yeah, vodka, and they ring a bell and Pumbo, 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 until you get the Pumbo here. I'm going. Your, I'm ah, going. Really good. This is, that sounds great. He makes another version with dark bitter chocolate. That's a combination of ground cacao sugar and cocoa paste. He says that the ground cacao and the cocoa paste have very different kicks of flavor and aroma. It's another face of chocolate. Yeah, great. There is, it's completely different than anything that most people would think of as chocolate. This is like a drinking, a light drinking version of a bittersweet chocolate. Correct. Yeah. And when we think in the States about drinking hot chocolate, it's super rich yeah, and yeah. so filling and everything. You could drink this and feel incredibly refreshed, not weighted down okay. in any way. Beautiful, thank you so much. No, you're welcome, thank you for coming. Jose Ramon completely convinced me that what he is doing is Mexican chocolate. Origin of the chocolate is 100% Mexican. Flavors are 100% Mexican. Technique, yeah, it's uh, something that was developed in Europe, but hey, Mexican food has for centuries been welcoming to stuff from all over the world and that's what makes it such a rich and complex cuisine. He says he wants this to be the future of Mexican chocolate and you know he just might make it. Whether it's served in a modern bonbon or a traditional drink, the chocolate of Mexico is deeply rooted in the culture. Its origins date back thousands of years. And no one that I know can champion the subject as well as Hector Galvan from La Casa Tropical. Hector comes from the world of design and architecture. But these days, instead of creating ultra-modern buildings, he's making chocolate rooted in the most ancient and traditional methods. This es, es una pregunta que siempre tengo. Que Chocolate empezó aquí en México, Ajá. pero si preguntas a cualquier persona del mundo, casi todos van a decir que el mejor chocolate del mundo viene de Europa. Yo creo que en el mundo pasan esas situaciones, no nada más con el chocolate en México, sino siempre hay una translación de los momentos económicos y las expresiones culturales de los pueblos, ¿no? Que además reconocemos que ha sido olvidada por nosotros mismos, los mexicanos, ¿no? Que el chocolate es algo que se fue perdiendo como cultura. ¿Y cuándo perdió México este, su relación con chocolate? Yo creo que es un proceso muy lento que comienza desde la conquista. Desde la conquista. Sin duda. Desde el periodo prehispánico, ¿cómo ha cambiado el uso del chocolate, el consumo del chocolate? Eh, hay muchas formas, y se quedan las antiguas, algunas, muchas de las antiguas en algunas regiones, y se toma y se bebe de nuevas maneras, ¿no? En restaurantes, en postres, en, como en todo el mundo, ¿no? Creo que de esa manera se va cambiando. 
Pues en México también ha cambiado mucho el cultivo del chocolate, ¿verdad? Muchísimo. Y hemos perdido bastante. Mucho, mucho. Bastante. Y, y tú estás enfocado un poquito en, en esas fincas donde todavía se quedan esas plantas de... Así es, de, con familias. Familias. Que Exacto. están cultivando, pero están cultivando variedades diferentes, antiguos, ¿verdad? Bueno, tenemos variedades que provienen del mundo antiguo. Uh -huh. ¿Los probamos? Claro. Este es un Real Soconusco. De, es, de Chiapas también. Es un Chiapas. Uh -huh. Es un Chiapas hacia la costa. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Y tenemos tres altitudes, la, los tres huertos con donde sembramos. Uh -huh. Este fue el primer chocolate que probó la, los europeos, que probaron los europeos, uh -huh. que la corte española probó por primera vez. Uh -huh. Ese es el chocolate que conoció el viejo mundo por primera Eso. vez. El ah. Real Soconusco. Uh -huh. Es el chocolate que tomaba Moctezuma, este es el grano uh -huh. que tomaba... Y eso tiene un poquito de taninos también. Es, es muy complejo. Es muy complejo. Pero lo que me gusta en esa forma que tú dijiste, pasamos al vino tinto, a los tánicos como vino tinto, vino tinto ¿no? Sí. Yo siento que es como el chocolate que viaja y se va al, al viejo mundo uh -huh. y que viene de fermentación de pulque y pasa vino tinto, uh -huh. ¿sabes? Sí, sí, sí. Cualquier persona que conozca un poco de la comida mexicana uh -huh. tradicional antigua, de la cultura madre, de origen, de las cenizas, de las fermentaciones, uh -huh. del pulque, podrá entender este chocolate, sin duda, reconocer una cultura de origen. Perfecto. Héctor no solo just talk about chocolate philosophically. Here at La Casa Tropical, they also make their own chocolate by hand, grinding the beans over many hours, tempering that beautiful chocolate by hand and then molding it into bars or little medallions. It's a beautiful process. We've seen in the United States, the little guys can completely change the way that people think about food. Um, we have this whole movement of farm to table, little tiny farms really affecting the whole food supply of a town. And Hector's got all of the capabilities to do that. And in fact, when you go to the best restaurants in Mexico City, a huge and very sophisticated metropolis, you're going to find his chocolate in there. So he's already making a big difference. All the chefs are talking about what he's doing because he's giving them that unique product. That's Well, it's not only unique, but it also has deep roots in their own cultural heritage. There are times when you just need a mouthful of something really chocolatey. So Lainey and I have decided to make those old-fashioned chocolate truffles. They're super easy to make at your house. But we're going to make a little change on it. Usually it's made with all bittersweet chocolate, but we're going to be adding some Mexican chocolate to it to give it a little bit more interesting flavor, kind of a more robust and rustic texture as well. So you chop up that four ounces of your bittersweet chocolate. Here I'm using um, 70%. And then you add your Mexican chocolate. Now, I always recommend that if you're going to go to Mexico, bring back some handmade chocolate from wherever it is that you go. Or there are some varieties of handcrafted Mexican-style chocolates being made in the U.S. today. And that's what I'm going to use for this because, well, first of all, they're organic and fair trade. So we know they're going to be uh, of a decent quality. And then you're going to get a more intense chocolate flavor out of them. And now I'm going to pulse this until it looks a little bit like cocoa powder. With the food processor running, pour in hot cream. That'll melt all that chocolate as it mixes in. Next, scrape it all into a pan. Now I'm just going to smooth this down until it covers the whole bottom of the pan and then put it in the refrigerator to firm up about half an hour. Here it is. 
this now firm, intense chocolate filling is gonna get rolled in a little bit of cocoa powder because that's not sweet at all, but we're gonna mix that with a little bit of granulated sugar to just mirror that sort of rustic quality of the Mexican chocolate. But we've gotta make that mixture first. So I have some cocoa powder here and some granulated sugar, about a half cup of each. Top goes on and then it folds. That's gonna go into a flat dish and we're ready to start forming these guys. So you're just gonna wanna like scoop it up and then sort of form it into something that's roughly round, okay? But once we get it into a roughly round shape like that, we can just drop it in there. Roll them into your cocoa mixture. And then very, very lightly, give them a round shape with your hands like that and set them on a plate. Let them temper at room temperature for uh, maybe 15 or 20 minutes before you serve them. And I'll tell you, everybody is gonna be happy. I'm gonna show you how to make my go-to chocolate sauce and then give it some very distinctive Mexican flavors. I have a very bittersweet chocolate here that I'm gonna put into a saucepan. Add to that a cup full of cream and a quarter cup of agave syrup. Turn on the heat to medium and whisk it until it all comes together. Turn the temperature to low, and I'm gonna measure into the pot a little bit of Mexican canela, that true cinnamon, the kind that you can find in the Mexican grocery stores. Of course, regular, regular cinnamon would work too, but it doesn't have quite the same flowery aroma. And then a couple of teaspoons of Mexican vanilla. Also, more on the flowery side of flavor than what you will find in a lot of other kinds of vanilla. All of that gets whisked together, giving that sort of traditional Mexican chocolate flavor of vanilla and cinnamon. I'm gonna let this cool off completely and then I'm gonna make it into a drink, but a drink that just might surprise you. So this drink is, well, it's a little like a chocolate margarita. Start with an ounce and a half of tequila, just like you're making a margarita. Pour in half an ounce of creme de cacao. A half ounce of agave syrup goes in next. And finally, add a half ounce of our homemade chocolate sauce. And then stir everything together. Moisten the rim of a martini glass with some water, and then place the glass in a mixture of sugar and Mexican canela. Next, fill the shaker with ice, and shake vigorously for about 15 seconds. Dessert, anyone? Mexican chocolate is great in a cake, and I'm going to show you one that's a little surprising because it's not only studded with Mexican chocolate, but also with toasted salted pumpkin seeds. This cake is super delicious, but it's just a, a one layer cake, and it has a crunchy crust, a crunchy sugary crust. Just let me step you through it because I think you're really gonna love this. You need a nine inch cake pan and I cut a piece of parchment to line it. I'll tell you that this cake really doesn't come out good unless you have that piece of parchment in the base of it. 
uh, one tablespoon of butter. This is easiest to do if it's at room temperature. I give it a couple of swipes on the base of the pan just to hold the parchment paper in place. And then I'm gonna use the rest of that one tablespoon of butter to smear over the parchment. Next, some of those toasted pumpkin seeds. It'll take about a half a cup to nicely, evenly coat over the bottom. I don't want it to be too heavy, but this is going to become that crunchy crust I was talking about. And then a couple of tablespoons of sugar, and I want to make sure to sprinkle those evenly over this pumpkin seed butter base. Now on to the batter. This is a very simple batter to make and it's all made in a food processor. I need a cup and a quarter of these toasted salted pumpkin seeds and a cup of sugar. That I will process until it looks like damp sand. Now, I need three eggs and a stick of butter. A third of a cup of all-purpose flour goes in next. and a quarter of a teaspoon of baking powder. The top goes on and we're gonna pulse this until everything is thoroughly combined. There we go. Now onto the Mexican chocolate. You can make this with grocery store Mexican chocolate, but it's better if you search out one of the artisan brands or bring some home from Mexico. And I wanna chop it into about the size of small peas. All of that will go into the food processor. That was about a half a cup of chopped Mexican chocolate. And one more very special ingredient. I'm gonna give it about a tablespoon of silver tequila. You could put a little bit of Mexican vanilla in there. If tequila is not your thing, I'm going to pulse the food processor just to combine everything. And now it's time to scrape it into this prepared cake pan. And we're ready to put it into the oven. It'll bake at 350 degrees for 35 to 40 minutes. I've let the cake cool until it's just a little warmer than room temperature. You wanna unmold it while it's still slightly warm. Put it here, flip my cake plate upside down on it, then reverse the two. I heard it fall. Do that. Oh, that's so beautiful. It's just, it's with that sugary, crunchy, crackly looking crust on the top of it. Maybe just a little bit of powdered sugar over that. It's simple, but it's so good. Thank you.